This Monstera right here I bought as a super healthy houseplant with a ton of leaves and unfortunately I am down to just one. This guy on the other hand I was able to score at 70% off and that's because when I found it in the plant nursery it was in one corner not getting enough sunlight but it really looked like it was on its last leg of survival. Hey guys, it's Erica. Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're talking all about the Monstera Deliciosa. So I actually have three of them in my collection. The first one that I got was this beautiful Thai constellation. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, I got it super cheap because it was a dying plant. Literally, it only had this one leaf and then it had two juvenile leaves which died out. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to save it before I really knew what to do with this house plant. But now it is blooming very, very beautifully. And the leaves are like literally double the size of my hand. So I'm very very happy with this house plant. The second Monstera that I got I actually bought from a famous plant nursery here and it was a very beautiful and healthy Monstera. I think it had around four really big nice leaves and I managed to kill all of those leaves up until it was only this one left and I was really scared that I was going to kill the plant but Fortunately, it is now out of life support and it is starting to grow again. So I'm very, very happy as well with this one. So I will be talking a little bit about what I did wrong with this guy and exactly how I was able to save it. So the third one that I got is actually a propagation. And if you have seen my plant propagation in water video, you will remember this guy. This one was propagated from two stems. It had two leaves in one stem and then it had just one leaf in the other stem. So if you have seen that video, you will know how big this house plant has grown. So I'm very, very happy with my propagation on the Monstera. In today's video, I'm going to take you guys through some care tips and all of the tips and tricks that I have learned in my journey of growing these houseplants. So let's begin with number one and I'm first going to talk about the growing medium. As you can tell, I don't grow any of my Monsteras in soil and I use something instead that is called LICA, which stands for Lightweight Expanded Clay Aggregates. Basically, these are just clay pebbles and I really prefer using LICA over any other medium especially for my indoor house plants simply because it's a lot less messy as compared to dealing with soil it's also inert it doesn't have any organic material in that way it doesn't attract any bugs it doesn't have any pests so you don't have to worry about spider mites and all of those other things and then the third and probably the most important is that I don't have to worry about the watering schedule of my plants so with Lyca, all you really need to do is fill up the reservoir of your plant basket. And yes, I am just using plastics right here. So I've got my recycled container. So what you want to do is just fill it up maybe one third of the way. And since Lyca works in sort of like a wicking system, you don't have to worry about overwatering your house plants. If you are wondering where to get Leica, I actually got mine from Ikea, but I will try to link some other options in the description down below. So in terms of growing medium for my Monstera, I usually like something that is a little bit more aerated. And aerated just means that there are like pockets of air within the growing medium so that, uh, so that there is good air circulation within the roots. If you don't like growing your Monstera in Leica or if you're unable to find this sort of growing medium, you can also try using cocoa husk and cocoa husk is just basically the the coconut um, husk and then they chop it up into chunks and then that's what they use to grow so it's got a lot of fibers to it which makes it really really good for the roots to cling on to especially if you have a lot of those aerial roots they really like the coconut husk fiber because it does provide something to really cling on to but at the same time there's a lot of air pockets in between the in between the chunks and that really allows the monstera to breathe and to get the amount of air that it wants so definitely coconut chunks or coconut husk is another great medium for growing your monstera the last way that you can grow your monstera and i think that this is by far the easiest growing medium is to actually just leave it in water so in order to propagate your monstera what you want to do is cut it below the node uh, sometimes you will see an aerial root or you will see a little bit of a bump that delineates the the node area so 
once you cut below that you just place it in water and then you will see roots start to grow in about two weeks to one month and what you can do is actually just completely leave it alone and let your plant grow in water and then just change out the water every month or so so for those of you who really just don't want to do anything wrong just leave your monstera in water and definitely it will grow the only thing uh, that I noticed about this method is that the monstera does grow a little bit slower as compared to if you had put it in soil or in lica or in uh, cocoa husk as well so um, those are the different growing mediums that I have tried for my monsteras the second thing that I want to talk about when caring for a monstera is fertilizer or how often should you fertilize the monstera. So what I tend to use is actually a liquid fertilizer and that's because uh, with Lyca there isn't actually any organic material so there's no nutrients in this. It's really just a sort of medium for the plant to grow in and for the roots to cling onto. So for me I've tried using Miracle Grow and at first when you propagate the monstera you don't want to put in any fertilizer so the thing about fertilizer is you don't want to put it in too early in the plant's life cycle because it can burn the roots of the house plant or any plant actually and that's true also for the monstera even though that the monstera has a little bit of a thicker root so i think it is uh, less prone to this but uh, in terms of this one right here I've never used any fertilizer just yet simply because I haven't really gotten it quite out of life support just yet and then in terms of this one I've only actually fertilized this once so since this was my first monstera I really didn't know what I was doing and the nursery was nice enough to repot it for me so when I brought it home I just decided to leave it alone and even my husband was like that plant looks like it's dying and I was like no 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 it's going to become alive again or whatever so I just left it in soil and it did have a little bit of fertilizer I think they use like those pellet os osmocot that's what it's called osmocot they put a little bit of osmocot into the soil and I just left it so um, a month later, I noticed that both the juvenile leaves had turned yellow and died. And I was getting very scared that I was going to lose this guy. So I repotted it into Lyca after cutting off quite a bit of the root system as well. I just left it alone and I think about two months later it started to bloom. So this was the first leaf that came out. You can see it doesn't have much variegation just yet but I was just really really happy that the plant wasn't dying anymore. And then right after that it came out with this leaf which is absolutely gorgeous. So that's the time that I decided that okay I can try to put in a bit of fertilizer. So instead of using water I decided to put uh, a liquid fertilizer into this guy so I mixed it together with water and then I watered this one and the next uh, the next leaf that blossomed was this guy right here and you guys can see how huge this leaf is this is absolutely amazing I was so shocked when it finally opened I was like oh my god this guy this leaf is like two or three times the size of my hand and yeah I was really really shocked how big that the leaf could grow but I was also kind of scared as well because I wanted the plant to grow really bushy and not just upwards with really big leaves. I wanted it to have a lot more leaves down here and I wanted the root system to be really really established before pushing out new root growth. So I only fertilized this plant once and then I decided after that I'm not going to put any more fertilizer and you can see that this is the newest leaf that bloomed it's going to be a little bit smaller than the one with a bit of fertilizer but it is still quite large so uh, in terms of schedule I would say to do it maybe every three months but to really wait up until your uh, monstera is established before using any sort of fertilizer and then the fertilizer that I use is actually a liquid fertilizer so I use miracle grow and then I've seen some people they use like a seaweed type fertilizer also so you can try using that I think it might help also to grow the monstera a little bit faster but in terms of the growth of my monstera I'm actually very very happy with how it has been growing the third thing to talk about when it comes to caring for your monstera is sunlight and temperature requirements 
I find that the Monstera is not that picky with sunlight. So for instance, this Monstera was actually growing outdoors in a shaded area. And I was very scared when I actually moved it to the inside of the house. I was afraid that it might die on me because it wasn't getting enough sunlight. But so far, I've not noticed any sort of difference. I mean, well, this one was the one that I had to resuscitate from almost dying. But at the same time, I don't feel that there was any difference in terms of like uh, the growth of moving it from outside to the inside. So this was in the shaded part outdoors. And then on the inside, I keep all of my Monsteras in a brightly lit window. But I feel that even if I had moved it to an area that's not as brightly lit, it will still do completely fine because during this lockdown period, this monstera this one right here is always in the living room and it is in an area where we have blinds and we would usually close the blinds when we're watching tv so for most of the day the blinds would be closed and it would get a little bit of filtered sunlight but not so much and it's still doing okay so i think in terms of sunlight monsteras aren't too picky as long as you're not keeping it in complete darkness in terms of temperature, Monsteras grow native to South Mexico and that means they do like a more tropical type of climate. I actually take for granted that it's always warm here. It's always like 30 degrees Celsius and above. But earlier this year, I was in Japan and I did see a Monstera growing outdoors. So it was around like 10 to 15 degrees during the day and it was even colder during the night. And I just saw this Monstera right outside the, the shop of of the owner and it was just sitting there so it had yellowed a little bit but it was still surviving so I do think that once the monstera is established even in colder temperatures I mean not negative obviously but even if it is a little bit of colder temperatures the monstera can survive if it is for short periods of time Moving on to number four, and that is how fast does the Monstera actually grow? So for me, when I first started growing the Monstera, I was thinking to myself, it's going to grow really, really fast, simply because I was watching so many YouTube videos and everybody was saying that the Monstera grows extremely fast. I think what they forget to tell you is that it does take quite a while for the Monstera to establish itself, to establish the root system before it can start shooting out new leaves. So in the case of my Thai constellation, I actually had to cut off a lot of the root system. This one, I cut off almost completely all of its root system because of root rot. And uh, this one, of course, I grew it without any roots at all. And all of them took a little bit of time. So it took around three months before I actually saw it bloom out its first leaf, its first new leaf. I mean, aside from the leaves that it already had. So definitely uh, in terms of the growth, it's not as fast as it might seem, but the moment that it does start shooting out leaves, it will grow extremely fast. And what I mean by extremely fast is um, it shoots out leaves every two to three weeks. So especially with this one, which is just the regular Monstera Deliciosa, the green colored variety, it shoots out leaves a lot faster as compared to the Thai constellation. So any variegated variety of houseplants will sort of be a little bit slower in terms of the growth of new leaves and the Thai constellation so wait, let me just give you a timeline for this and I do have my notes written down. So in terms of my Thai constellation, I got it in December of 2019. As I mentioned, it had this leaf and then it had two juvenile leaves which both died on me. And uh, after I had transplanted it into Laika, it took up until June 1st for it to produce this leaf and this leaf right here. So the first two new leaves came out by June 1st and that's like what, six months or so before I actually saw any new growth in this houseplant. And then by July 7, it had produced this super huge leaf right here and then this one bloomed by July 27. So this is the newest leaf and so far I don't see any new leaf growth coming out just yet although uh, maybe in a week or so I might see something starting to grow out new. 
So in terms of the time it took to propagate this, I started in Feb. I think it was mid-Feb when I put this into water and then after I started adding in the Lyca balls and it wasn't up until June when it started to bloom. So this is actually a combination of two stems. One of the stems is actually producing these leaves with the fenestration and then the other one is producing only juvenile leaves right now. So you can see that this is the newest leaf that it has produced. It's still really really pretty but I can't wait for it to produce something that is a little bit more adult like with the fenestrations right here. So this is uh, the timeline for that Monstera. This Monstera right here was actually the healthiest one that I bought from the nursery. Unfortunately, because the roots were rotting underneath, even though it had a little bit of this stump right here, it stopped growing completely because it wasn't getting the right amount of nutrients and it wasn't getting, I guess, the amount of water that it needed. So actually when I repotted this, I had to keep it in here for about two weeks and then I realized that it was still rotting so I pulled it out again and then I had to cut off a little bit more of the root system leaving very little of the roots completely and then replanting this so about I think it's taken about two months before it's really started to start to grow again and that's one of the things about the monstera is if it isn't happy it won't grow so if you see that your monstera has a little bit of stunted growth and it's not really growing any roots as well then there is something Thing wrong where your plant is trying to tell you that it needs something. So that's actually the last thing that I want to talk about in this video and that is what are some of the problems that you might encounter with your Monstera. With me the number one problem that I had was actually root rot and I didn't even know that my plant was suffering from root rot. So what I noticed is that my plant actually had splotches on it. It had uh, leaves that had a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown and I really didn't know what was happening. So what I did is I actually researched on YouTube of course and I came across this video by um, Legends of Monstera. So I'll try to link the video here or I'll link it down below just in case you guys are interested in that to check it out. But anyways, he describes root rot as a problem where you basically just have to cut away all of the roots and then you want to just leave your plant out or leave all of the plant roots out to dry just before repotting it so that's what i tried to do and i was really scared actually to repot this one simply or to cut off all of the roots of this guy because it really had a very very beautiful root system i paid a lot of money for this plant so i was kind of scared to um, just cut it all away and i felt like i was throwing away my money but then at the same time the plant really wasn't surviving if i had just left all of the roots on. So I cut off I think half of the roots. I repotted it into Lyca right away and then two weeks later I realized that no I would have to actually cut off all of the roots. And the way that you know that your roots are rotting is they're kind of mushy and then they turn black in color. So all of those I just cut off everything and then after a while I repotted it back into here and now you can see that the new roots that are growing are actually white in color. They're white and kind of fuzzy. So I'm really happy that this guy is finally out of emergency care and producing really really beautiful roots for me. Some of the other roots that you can see from my Monstera are kind of green in color, green and brown. And this is actually one of the reasons why I like using clear containers because I get the satisfaction of knowing that the roots are growing even if I don't see it producing any new leaves. So yeah, so you can see some of the leaf, uh, the roots here are quite big and then some of them are smaller and they are either green or white in color. And then you can see also that this one actually is a really big root and then you can see some lateral roots growing out of it as well. Okay, so that is my plant care guide on the Monstera Deliciosa. This is definitely one of my favorite house plants. It is so low maintenance as long as you give it the right environment. Anyways, if you enjoyed this week's video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please also consider subscribing to my channel for more plant videos. If you know anybody who is interested in growing the Monstera Deliciosa or who uh, currently has the house plant, please do share my video as well. 
along with them. I'd love to hear some of your thoughts in the comments down below as well. So let me know and I will see all of you in a future video. Bye-bye!